today's interesting topic is CP angle tumor welcome to logic medical where you are understanding the concepts in medicine if you are new to my channel kindly consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon cerebral pontine angle tumor it is an anatomical space this angle is an anatomical space between cerebellum and pons filled with cerebrospinal fluid so here is the cerebellum it's a small brain below this big brain or the cerebrum is a face of the patient is the back of the skull here you can see the cerebrum the big brain here you can see in the posterior cranial fossa the cerebellum here is the brain stem in the brain stem there are three parts mid brain pons medulla oblongata between these three parts this middle part is called pons so between the pons and cerebellum there is an angle it's called cerebellar pontine angle the tumor arising from this area is called as cerebellar pontine angle tumor so i have a better understanding i'll draw a simple diagram the three parts of the brain stem from above downwards you can see it here this is the mid brain the middle portion is the pons and the lower portion is the middle and here comes the cerebellum with its vermis and the white matter which is like a tree of life so this cerebellum is mainly concerned with balance and equilibrium it receives information from spinal cord brain stem and cerebrum integrates this information and we are able to maintain the posture that is the position of the body with respect to the space by the sitting posture standing posture walking posture we are able to balance ourselves all this process we have learned over a period of time from our birth okay so these are the three parts of brain stem the mid brain pons and medulla oblongata you clearly see at this level there is an angle so, this is the angle is between actually between the pons and medulla oblongata anteriorly and cerebellum posteriorly for simplicity purpose we call it as cerebellum pontine angle at this angle there is a most important cranial nerve especially for speech and hearing this eighth cranial nerve emerges the eighth cranial nerve is vestibulo cochlear nerve it has got two divisions the cochlear division helps in hearing from the organ of cochlea it carries the information of hearing whereas the vestibular division from the macula of sacula and utricle the static equilibrium and crista ampullaris of the semicircular canal it carries the sense of balance or kinetic equilibrium so cochlear division helps in hearing vestibular division helps in balance so this is exactly at the cp angle so if at all a tumor arises the first nerve to be damaged is the eighth cranial nerve vestibulo cochlear or the auditory or the acoustic nerve if the tumor enlarges the next cranial nerve or the pontomedullary junction will be more medial the seventh cranial nerve or the facial nerve it is a motor nerve to the face it supplies muscles of facial expression so what happens the tumor if it compresses the seventh cranial nerve the muscles of facial expression will be paralyzed so facial palsy will result more medially there will be sixth cranial nerve at the pontal medial junction the sixth cranial nerve is the abducens nerve this abducens nerve supplies lateral rectus muscle which helps in abduction of the eyeball seeing sideways in the eyeball okay so if this nerve is compressed by the tumor then there is a paralysis of lateral rectus we can't see laterally or sideways therefore the eye is inwardly rotated that is called as medial squint or the internal squint one of the eye will keep looking straight while the other eye sees the nasal bridge or the nose that is called medial squint for the visual axis of both eyes are not in the same plane they should be parallel to one another okay so this is how squint will result if the cp angle tumor compresses the sixth cranial nerve lower down in the middle of longata in the posterior lateral circus we have other cranial nerves like the ninth cranial nerve the glossopharyngeal nerve which carries the taste from the posterior part of the tongue and pharynx and general sensation so this is also involved in swallowing reflex so if the tumor enlarges inferiorly in this direction then swallowing will be affected that is is a problem in swallowing the difficulty in deglutition or dysphagia sensation in the throat is lost so there can be chance of aspiration 
next kernel now which is right inferior to 9th in the 10th kernel is vagus nerve this supplies the entire GAT and also the organ of speech that is larynx all the muscles of larynx are supplied by 10th kernel now the recurrent laryngeal now except the cricothyroid on the external aspect supplied again by vagus nerve but since the muscle is on the external aspect of larynx it is supplied by external laryngeal nerve but it is still supplied by vagus nerve so there will be change in voice, coarseness of voice in this patient. Then since the vagus nerve supplies the entire GAT, there will be the chance of indigestion because peristalsis will be affected and also problem during deglutition or swallowing resulting in dysphagia. Just inferior to the 10th cranium, there will be 11th cranium. This, this 11th cranium has got cranial component and spinal component. I limit myself to the uh, spinal or I can tell you cranial also. Cranial supplies the muscles of soft palate and the muscles of pharynx, cranial component of the accessory nerve. So thereby the paralysis of that results in difficulty in swallowing the dysphagia. The spinal component supplies two muscles of the neck, the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. The sternocleidomastoid helps in a rotating movement of the neck from side to side. The chin will go to one shoulder to another shoulder. Whereas the the another uh, the spinal component also supplies Another muscle that is trapezius. Trapezius is on the posterior part of the neck. It's diamond shape or rhomboid shape. It helps in shrugging movement, retraction of scapula, and depression of scapula. It will concentrate only on shrugging movement. Okay. So even if that muscle is paralyzed, the cause of the 11th cranial nerve injury, cause of CP angle tumor, the shrugging of the patient will be affected. So this is the rationale behind the CP angle tumor affecting the 8th, 7th, 6th cranial nerve horizontally. The 9th, 10th, and 11th kind of now vertically downwards. So, this is the CP angle, cerebellar quantum angle. I hope this basis makes you understand the symptoms and also helps you to analyze the symptoms. But why the symptoms are arising? This is just a, an image in which we can see the forms. Posteriorly, there is cerebellum. You can clearly see the 8th kind of now coming from the cochlea and the vestibule. So, cochlear division and the vestibular division. And also fascia now going within the facial canal, the pictures part of temporal bone, the emerges out of the stylomastoid foramen, supplies the muscles of facial expression. So first the tumor will involve the cochlear nerve, then vestibular nerve, then it will involve the facial nerve. Subsequently it can involve even the sixth cranial nerve, the descent nerve. If it goes downward, it involves ninth, tenth and eleventh cranial nerve respectively. All these three cranial nerves will be emerging out of the skull through jugular foramen. So this is the logic behind the CP angle tumor symptoms. So the CP angle tumor can arise from any of these following. It will start from this area, from the neural tissue itself, from the Schwann cells, that is the, which forms the myelin sheath. That only can cause a irregular, uncontrolled growth resulting in tumor, or the meninges covering this, or from the CSF or the ependymal cells, the meningeal tissue the bony tissue from the base of the skull or from the blood vessels surrounding this cerebellum is supplied by superior cerebellar arteries and posterior inferior anterior inferior cerebellar arteries even the aneurysm of these arteries or the tumors angiomas of these arteries can compress the cp angle resulting in cp angle tumor so the possible vision just now i told you from the nerve structure itself it can be a neuroma or the arises from the myelin sheath forming cell schwann cell it can be called a schwann from the meninges, the tumor is called as meningoma. From the arachnoid villa, it's called arachnoid cyst or the metastatic tumor of the brain, which is involving the meninges, resulting in compression of CP angle. Means metastasis means the tumor is present elsewhere, like in kidney, liver, then it spread to the brain of the meninges. Then in the cystinal spaces, it can be epidermal cyst, that is the epidermis of the skin, which has to be there on the external aspect on the skin surface. During development, brain develops from the ectoderm. So during that time, an extra amount of epithelial tissue will form a cyst, epidermal cyst. Same goes with dermoid cyst. Dermoid means dermis surface to again skin. Then some amount of adipose tissue, lipoma, lipid forming cell, adipose tissue, lipid storing cell that can accumulate over here near the CP angle causing lipoma and compression of all these nerves what I just now mentioned. In the vascular tumor just now I told you. Aneurysm, abnormal dilatation of the arteries, AV malformation, arteriovenous malformations, paraganglionoma, 
the nerve cells present in the wall of the blood vessel can also enlarge from the paraganglion and compressing the signal. Cerebellar ventricles within the ventricle of the brain stem, there can be a problem within the ependymal cells, ependymoma, in the lymphoid tissue accumulation resulting in lymphoma, or the glial tissue or the supporting cells called as glioma. These are the other rare possibilities. In the skull base, I told you the bones can be affected. Chondroma is a cartilaginous tissue resulting in tumor. Chondroma, pituitary adenoma near the base of the brain, the pituitary gland can massively enlarge, causing adenoma. Then cholesterol granuloma, granulous tissue, in which we come out of cholesterol layer, it's called cholesterol granuloma. It's extremely rare but positive. The most common one is acoustic neuroma or acoustic schwannoma, which causes a CPNL tumor. So this CPNL tumor can have various stages, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and 4. So this one, this is the canal, internal acoustic canal, 1 cm in length. The stage 1, the tumor arises from the, just now I told you, Schwann cells of the acoustic nerve. So therefore it is called as acoustic neuroma or acoustic schwannoma. It is an intracanalicular, only in the internal acoustic nerve the tumor is there. So this is stage 1. Here, I will repeat one more time for your convenience. The 8th cranial nerve can get involved and 7th cranial nerve can get involved. So, the person will have SNHL, sensory neural hearing loss, facial noise involvement, so the facial palsy. As we go towards stage 2, you can see the tumor is from the canal, internal auditory meatus. It's extending towards the brainstem but not at just the brainstem level. It's almost touching the Cerebellum. This is a cerebellum on the posterior aspect. This is a cut section of the pons. It is engulfing the nerves and going towards the CPNL. Still not touch the CPNL. Here you can see in the stage 3 is touching the CPNL. Cerebellum. This is a cerebellum pons. Cerebellum pontine angle. Here it is involved even the 6th cranial nerve. Inferiorly if it goes, it involves 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerve. Here in stage 4, massive enlargement resulting in midline deviation. Here the tumor size is really large, approximately 15 millimeter. Here it is 5 to 15. It's more than 15 millimeter here in the stage 4. The tumor size is more than 15 millimeter. You can clearly see it's compressing the structures. It's compressing the brain stem, it is compressing the cerebellum. So intense headache will be there. Cerebellum ataxia, the problem in the gate will be there, drunken gate will be there for the patient because it is compressing the cerebellum. I hope you understood stage 1 is intracanalicular, stage 2 is intracranial but not towards the CP angle, it is touching the CP angle, here it is compressing the structures near the CP angle which includes the pons, cerebellum and the cranial nerves. So what is the rationale behind each and every symptom? We just now saw the orientation. The 8th cranial nerve, horizontal orientation, 7th cranial nerve, 6th cranial nerve. These three are horizontally present from the CP angle towards the midline of the brain stem at the pontal medullary junction. Whereas 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerve are vertically oriented descending the posterior lateral sulcus of the medulla oblongata. It is descending vertically down from the CP angle. So the 8th cranial nerve is involved, can you guess? The eight cranial nerve is involved with the cochlear division, then the person will have sensory neural hearing loss. If you told that, you got the correct answer. If the vestibular division is involved, the vestibular nerve, disequilibrium. Equilibrium means balance. The person feels imbalance, right? So it's also called disequilibrium, DYS, sorry. Disequilibrium and vertigo. Feeling that giddiness will be there. What if the seventh cranial nerve is involved? Seventh cranial nerve is motor to the face, supplies muscles of facial expression. I will give you a clue. So, a spatial palsy. You told you want the correct answer. Sixth cranial nerve abducens nerve. Supplies lateral rectus which causes abduction of eyeball. Movement away from midline. What will happen? No movement away from midline. Instead, there will be internal splint or medial splint because there is no lateral movement. So, the other muscles will continue to work. So, pull the eye medially. Medial splint or internal splint. If the ninth cranial nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve is involved, the tongue, pharynx, Sensation will be lost, so it will be dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing. Only if you have sensation, if the food is reaching your throat, then only you can swallow, right? So if you don't feel that sensation, there will be a problem in swallowing. Phagia means swallowing, this means difficulty, difficulty in swallowing. Tenth brain and now, vagus nerve supplies the larynx and the voice box. 
So initiation of speech is affected. Coarseness of voice. Unilateral condition. Only one vocal cord fails to move. While the other side it continues to move. So voice is there. Coarseness is there in the voice. An internal laryngeal or branch of vagus nerve supplies the mucus of larynx. So if you tell friend tells a joke when you are drinking water, <coughs> you cough out. But this patient with tenth line of involvement will not be able to cough out like that reflexly, resulting in aspiration of the liquid or the food which he is swallowing. That will result in pneumonia, infection of the lung. Aspiration is also one of the major complications of this patient. Eleventh line of the adjacent or the accessory nerve, sorry, accessory nerve. This eleventh line of supplies soft palate muscle, pharyngeal muscle, so dysphagia is of course there, difficulty in swallowing. In addition to that, suffers sternocleidomastoid student trapezius. So what symptom? So he is not able to move his neck properly, difficulty in movement of the neck, difficulty in movement of the shoulder, especially this movement, shrugging movement of the shoulder. He's got a great difficulty. It is spinal accessory. I hope you understand this logic behind each symptom. This is a summary of the symptoms, same thing depicted with respect to now. Either you can present in that manner or this manner. Cochlear now, vestibular now. Cochlear now, sensory nerve hearing or stimulus, vestibular now, desiccarium. Seventh clinic now, facial weakness. Eight. Sixth clinic now, lateral ductus palsy resulting in internal splint. Ninth clinic now, dysphagia or difficulty in swallowing. Tenth clinic now, hoarseness of voice, aspiration of the food or the fluids. Eleventh clinic now, shoulder weakness. If the brainstorm gets involved, even we can have a headache, visual loss. And this one, I forgot to tell you, the cerebellum, involvement, compression of the cerebellum results in imbalance, ataxia, person cannot walk in a straight line. They will be swaying like a drunken person. The cerebellar ataxia is called as drunken gait, G A I T. The possible investigation which we can do in this patient by a sequential manner is first we will do X ray to see whether really the person has got a CP angle tumor or just a some other condition. So if we suspect something on an X-ray at the CT angle, then we will advise CT scan. CT scan more so, computerized tomographic scan, it's more so for solid lesion, bony lesions, not for soft tissue lesion. Once we see something in the CT scan, but we are not sure about the extent of the lesion, then we do MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, is the investigation of choice for soft tissue lesion. So why don't we do MRI in the beginning itself? See. So MRI is not required for every patient. Only if there is a problem in a simple X-ray, which is hardly 50 rupees, then only we can go for other investigations which are much costlier. We can't do a MRI for every other patient. So only we are suspicious of X-ray or CT scan. CT scan is a combined axial X-ray. Okay. So it used a computerized technology to take serial sections of the body. Computerized tomographic scan. It involves X-ray only. MRI doesn't involve X-ray. It's a magnetic resonance imaging. It involves sound waves. Okay, it's the safest of all. Electronistography, that is to see nystagmus in the eye, that is rapid repetitive movement in the eye. Electronistography can also be taken into account. Brain stem evoked response audiometry. When you are planning a surgery for this patient, DERA is important because once we do the surgery, either the person's or definitely the tumor is removed, but the audition, the hearing ability of the patient can only be improved if the brainstem is intact. If the brainstem is already destroyed by the tumor, then even if doing surgery, the hearing improvement will not be there. So then the patient starts questioning why the hearing improvement is not there. If the lira is responsive, the brainstem is responsive for the audiometric impulses, then following the surgery, definitely hearing improvement will be there. If the lira is not so responsive, the brainstem is not responsive. Tumor we can remove, but audition will not improve. I hope you know, clears the doubt. Magnetic resonance imaging of the other parts of the body to see the metastasis or the spread of the tumor. Also can be done. Please note these four images. Kindly note these images. Hmm? Okay. First, second, third, fourth. Especially this this area you have to observe. See here. Here is clearly visible. That's a large area. See here in first section. See here. It's a grayish. So here, slightly outline is of this view. It's not there on the other side. You can see the clearly. So here, you can clearly see a highly deviating lesion. So this is a CP angle tumor. You can clearly also make out the intracanalicular extent. Here also you can see it's a grayish shadow. Here is a whitey shadow. You can clearly make out intracanalicular portion. So this would have been stage one. 
that extends here stage 2 it touches this stage 3 it's pushing it actually you can make out it's pushing it so it is stage 4 here it's pushing it the, cent the central canal it's not exactly central it's deviated to the opposite side so this is stage 4 here also you can clearly see it's definitely stage 4 already already registers put the arrow also for this intracranial putting intracranial touching the CP angle not only touching pushing the CP angle the cerebellum posteriorly and the pons medially there is a midline shift definitely the canals and all are narrow the ventricles of the especially the fourth ventricle the cavity of the cerebellum is narrow it can also result in hydrocephalus last topic for today is treatment so imagine it's a stage 1 tumor, intracranial portion, or a stage 2 tumor, it's just extended into the cranial cavity, intracranial portion. This can be surgically removed. Surgery is the treatment of choice. But the uh, operating surgeon will decide the treatment option after discussing with the patient. So both the doctor and the patient consent to require the surgery. You can't force the surgery to the patient. So imagine if it's a large tumor, it's invading into the brain. It is pushing the midline shift. We can't operate because of various reasons, other comorbidities in the patient. We can't remove the tumor, but still we have to save the patient. So we give radiation therapy. A focused X ray so that radiations are given so that the tumor size shrinks in size and relieves the compression over the cranial nerves. Uh, 8, 7, and 6 horizontally, 9, 10, and 11 vertically. That is radiation therapy. In inoperable cases, we can give. Radiation therapy, surgical treatment is excision of the tumor, EXI, CI, SI, and excision of tumor in earlier stages. Later stages, we have to do radiation therapy to shrink the tumor size. When the tumor size is shrink, shrunk, then we can plan for surgery as well with the consent of the patient. So, this is the treatment of choice for CP angle tumor. In summary, the CP angle tumor this is a tumor arising at the junction between. The cerebellum posteriorly and the pons anteriorly. At this junction, the most common tumor is acoustic neuroma. The tumor arising from the acoustic nerve or the vestibulocochlear nerve, especially the Schwann cells, the myelin sheath forming cells. So it is also called acoustic Schwann nerve. There are various stages stage 1 within the canal, internal auditory canal, stage 2 intracranial, stage 3 touching the CP angle, stage 4 pushing the structures of the CP angle to on the opposite side. So symptoms are based on the nerve compressed, that is 8th cranial nerve, hearing balance, 7th cranial nerve, facial palsy, 6th cranial nerve, then the spin, 9th cranial nerve, dysphagia, 10th cranial nerve, difficulty in initiating voice, hoarseness of voice, then 11th cranial nerve, movement of the shoulder and the neck will be affected, especially the shrugging movement. Investigation initially x-ray, then CT, then MRI, then electronic tomography to see for any spin changes. And also MRI for seeing the other areas of the body whether metastasis has happened or not. Treatment of choices, surgical excision of tumor. In inoperable cases, we do radiation therapy. Thank you for your patience, listening and understanding. Like and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to press the thumbs up icon. Show me that you like this video. So that it increases this video more video. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you for watching and learning from Logic Medical. Bye. Happy learning.